In today's video, we're going to use this SysJoint SV4401A vector network analyzer that I got from Chelligans to characterize the parameters of this mini circuits directional coupler. This is a ZFDC-20-5+. We'll run through the entire process of setting up the VNA, running the calibration, and then running the various measurements on this directional coupler. As we can see from the data sheet, this is a 100 kilohertz to 2 gigahertz directional coupler. So that sets the frequency range that we're going to make the measurements over. Now just as a review, a directional coupler is a three-port RF device that can give you a sample of the signal going through in one direction and ideally nothing for a signal going in the opposite direction. Hence the name directional coupler. There's basically four main parameters we can measure on a directional coupler. One is the what's called the main line loss which is when I, the normal path where I send an RF signal through into the input and out of the output, how much signal is lost in that path. That's called the mainline loss. The next important parameter is the coupling ratio. If I'm sending a signal through the input to the output, how much of that signal is coupled off uh, into the coupled port. Now this is a 20 dB coupler, meaning that ideally the coupled uh, power will be 20 dB below the mainline power going through. Now another important parameter of a directional coupler is called the directivity. The directivity is the ratio of the forward coupled response to the reverse coupled response. Now ideally, as we said, this coupled, the forward coupled uh, loss here should be about 20 dB or about 20 dB down. And ideally the reverse would not get any signal coupled here. But the reality is some signal will get coupled in the reverse direction. The difference between the forward coupled power and the reverse coupled power is called the directivity. And of course the final measurements we could make are the return loss of each of the three ports with the other two terminated. So the basic specifications are shown in this part of the table here. Again we're looking at a 100 kilohertz to 2 gigahertz frequency range. The coupling ratio, which is ideally the most important parameter, is nominally 19.5 uh, dB plus or minus a half a dB with about a half a dB of flatness. The mainline loss through the, the forward path of the device, they give it in free, three frequency ranges. So this is the basically 100 kilohertz to uh, 1 megahertz, then 1 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, and then 1 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz. And they show a typical value, you know, 0.3 dB, 0.7 dB, 1.5, and then a max value for each of those ranges. And then finally we show the directivity, okay, typically in the low range, about 30 dB, in the mid-range, about 27 dB typically, and the upper range, about 22 dB typical. They show the SWR, which is just another way of expressing a return loss, uh, as 1.2 to 1 and it's rated for power. We're not going to test anything with respect to power. And the data sheet also has some typical performance data. This is not exactly what our device will measure at, but it should be reasonably close in terms of, you know, they measure over frequency for the mainline loss, the coupling, directivity, and return loss. And of course the plots down here will plot the mainline loss, coupling and directivity on one plot here and then the return loss on another plot here to give us an idea of how these parameters ought to vary with frequency. So we'll see if our results coincide or come close to what these look like. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set the frequency range to do the measurements. So running here from the top menu I hit stimulus and hit set frequency and we'll set using start and stop. So if I hit start and I'm going to set this to 100 kilohertz and we'll set our stop frequency to 2 gigahertz and then once we've got that set we can hit back. Now given that our device has got B and C connectors on it I really want to run a cal calibration as close as possible to the DUT ports so I want to really get as close as possible to B and C connections for where I connect my calibration standards so we're going to have to use a couple of adapters and at least some of them will be included in the calibration and therefore essentially taken out of the measurement. I'm going to use an N to BNC male adapter on port 1. We're going, to, we're going to do most of our reflection based measurements off of port 1 and this allows me to connect up the coupler directly to that adapter. So we're going to leave that connected at all times. I will use the open, short, and load 
SMA calibration standards that came with the unit, but I'm also going to then use a BNC to SMA adapter and a BNC barrel to be able to connect up the standards to port 1 and to be able to connect up port 1 to port 2 to do the through calibration. Okay, to start the calibration process, and make sure we're back up at the top menu, and we'll hit Cal, and hit Reset to clear the calibration that's currently being used. So next we hit Calibrate, and we're going to start off by calibrating with the Open. So I'm going to take my SMA Open and connect it up to my SMA to BNC adapter, and connect that up to BNC adapter, and then hit Open, and let that run through its sweep. Next we take the SMA short and put that on the end of the adapter here and hit short and then remove the short and take our SMA 50 ohm standard and stick that on the adapter and hit load. So that completes our uh, port 1 terminate our calibrations. The next thing we want to do is calibrate the through. So I'm going to remove the BNC to SMA adapter. I'm going to put in a BNC barrel and use the cable that we're going to use when we do the through measurements and connect that to the other end. Oh, that's also connected over here to port 2. And now we'll hit through. With that done, we can hit done and it's cal calculating the calibration data and I'm going to just tell it to save. I'm going to save this into slot number 4 just so I remember where it is. So I can see it says 100k to 2 gig. That's the, where we've just saved the calibration we just did. So with that we can hit back uh, to get back to the main menu and then beginning to set up the traces that we want to have to make our measurements. Now the first thing we'll look at is the return loss or SWR now in order to make that measurement, I'm going to need to terminate the two ports that we're not testing. So we need a good termination for both of those. So I've got this, uh, this dummy load that I use here. We'll, we'll quickly take a look at this and the calibration standard on this adapter to be sure that both of them give me really good uh, return loss, very low SWR, so we know they're not going to affect our measurement. Let's first look at that. So we can configure our displays. The only two displays or traces that we really want to have are our log magnitude return loss plot uh, for S11 and as well as a SWR plot for uh, port 1. So I can uh, touch on trace 4 to remove it. I'll touch on trace 3 to remove it as well. We can see that trace 1 is already set up to be log mag of uh, S11, so we'll leave that one. But I'm going to touch and hold on trace 2 and I'm going to toggle its channel to put it onto channel 1. So now it's also showing right now log mag of S11 just like trace 1 is. I want to change the format of that to be SWR. Okay, those traces are set up. Let's first take a look to see how good this dummy load is over that frequency range. Okay, and we can see the uh, return loss is better than 30 dB all the way out to 2 gigahertz. So that's quite good and it's down near 60 dB at the low frequency end. The SWR is way down at the bottom of the screen. In fact, we can change our scale on that instead of being uh, 1 per div here. Let's change that to be uh, maybe 0.2 per div. Okay, we can see the SWR is rising ever so slightly all the way to the other end out here. Let's run that marker all the way out. We can see that's running at 1.06 or 1.07 uh, all the way out at 2 gigahertz. So I think that uh, that dummy load is okay. And let's replace that dummy load with the uh, calibration standard load uh, through the adapter just to be sure that that's going to give us acceptable results as well. Well, uh, not quite as good. It's up almost 1.2 at 2 gigahertz, okay, which is uh, kind of approaching what we expect the uh, SWR to be on the ports of the device, but at least we know that um, that's going to be, you know, on a terminated port, so it shouldn't really uh, bother us too much. I'll probably use that one on the coupled port when we do the main line because the effect of it should be really small because the coupling ratio is only 20 dB. Okay, so we'll take our, our coupler. I'm going to take that, uh, 
the termination that didn't quite do as good. I'm going to put that on the I'll put that on the coupled port, and then we'll take our dummy load and stick that on the output, and then we can connect the input to port one and take a look and see uh, what our results are. Okay. Well, uh, our, the yellow plot, as we said, is the return is the log mag of S11, uh, which uh, is really the reflection coefficient. Um, in order to convert that into return loss, we simply invert the sign. So we can just look at the magnitude of the number to kind of see where we're at. So this says at 2 gigahertz, we're at uh, minus 23 or minus 24 dB. And we can see we get a little bit of a hump down here. And uh, so, that, so things get uh, a little bit better, you know, right down in this frequency range here. And we're down around uh, minus 29 dB SWR of 1.07. Let's go back all the way up here and see the SWR here was about 1.1. So again, uh, below the 1.2 uh, typical that we uh, are specified. So let's reverse this and take a look at the uh, return loss, or in this case the reflection coefficient of the output port with the input terminated. So we'll put the termination on the input and then send the signal in through the output port and take a look at our results there. Okay, so now 14 dB, about 1.4. If we look down kind of in the middle range here, you know, we're about uh, 1.2, you know, in the neighborhood of about a gigahertz or so uh, with about 21 dB return loss. We'll focus next on the mainline loss. Uh, ideally, this would be zero, meaning you wouldn't lose anything. But we can see from this plot that, you know, and typically we should be in the neighborhood of about four tenths of a dB at the low frequency end, increasing to maybe close to two dB up at two gigahertz. Okay, so we're making a through measurement, and we only need one trace. So I'm going to uh, touch on trace 2 to get rid of it. We're going to touch on trace 1 to toggle its channel to be on channel 2. So now it shows me the log mag of, S of S21, which is the transmission coefficient, which is going to show us, effectively, the main line loss. So I'm going to terminate the coupled port, connect the input port to port 1, and connect the output to this coax which runs back to port number two. And we can see our result here is pretty good. Uh, all the way up at two gigahertz, we're about 1.3 dB of loss. And uh, the data sheet was telling us that that would be typically about 1.5. If we want to take a look at the shape of that a little bit better, we can adjust our scale here. Instead of being 10 dB per division, let's go to our scale and make it say 2 dB per division. And we get a little bit better view of what that trace is doing. And of course, at the very low frequency end, where it's supposed to be really pretty good, we're about uh, 0.39 dB. The data sheet says that we're typically about 0.3 to 0.4. So now for the directivity uh, and coupling measurements, those we want, again, still look at S21. But because we're looking at something that's going to be in the order of 20 dB or more, I'm going to change the scale back to uh, 10 dB per division because we're going to need uh, a little bit more range on the screen here. So the first thing we want to validate is the coupling ratio. So how much signal will be coupling to port uh, the coupled port. So we're going to measure that on port 2. We're going to put our signal in onto the input, and we'll terminate the main line output. So our plot now will show us the main line coupling, which we expect to be in the neighborhood of about 20 dB. And now if we take a look at this at low frequencies, we're about 19.4 uh, dB and working our way all the way up to you know, 2 gigahertz, we're about 18.9 dB. So we're, we're right in that range of 19.5 or so. Uh, so again, a 20 dB coupler. The spec again is, let's see, 19.5 plus or minus a half a dB. And I think we're probably pretty close to that all the way across this range. Now, in order to measure the directivity, we're going to measure first the amount of coupling we get in the reverse direction. Uh, so we're going to reverse our input and output connections on the device. Uh, and, but we're going to want to compare that trace to the one that we have here. So in order to do that comparison, I'm going to save this trace so it stays on screen so that we can compare it to our reverse measurements. And the difference between those is directivity. Now, in order to save this trace, we'll hit ref and say ref1 and say ref1 to trace1. 
So now ref1 is a copy, a static copy, of what we had on trace1. So that's going to always show us the transmission coefficient uh, of the coupled loss. Okay, we're still going to make our measurement on the coupled port, but now I'm going to uh, reverse my mainline connections. So I'll terminate the input and then connect the output uh, port to port 1. You can see again this trace is our forward coupled uh, transmission uh, coefficient or essentially coupling ratio. And then this is the reverse direction. Now the difference between these two is our directivity. Now right now I don't the marker is not showing the difference so let's configure that. Now if we go to the marker menu and we turn on the info set not very intuitive, but that's what it is. We're going, we're going to want to look at information from trace number one. We're also going to want to look at information from reference number one. Okay, so now I can close this. And now I actually see this is my measurement on trace one, or trace one, which is the reverse direction. And this is my measurement on the reference trace, which is our forward direction. Now, unfortunately, I could not find a way where we can actually do a delta between those two cursors. Uh, we can only show that um, you know as those two values. I looked at under operation I thought maybe it's there but no that's where we just use the markers to set say the frequency scale so that doesn't do it. Okay next I thought that maybe if I add another marker that I can do a delta between those. So if we go to marker select and turn on marker number two I can see marker two values show up here and I can move those around but again, I'm not getting a delta between the two. And if we go back, and if I even go under operations, again, no math for the markers there. Under sweep analysis, no, that's really not what that's for. So unfortunately, we're going to have to just manually do uh, the difference calculations ourselves. All right, so I went through and just added a couple of markers, uh, one at about 200 megahertz, uh, one at about 1 gig, 1.5 gig, and 2 gig, and showing both values. And if we just mentally do the difference between those two to give us directivity, we're looking at about, oh, 20, 29.8 dB or so for 200 meg. We're looking at about uh, 22.7 dB or so at 1 gig, about uh, 20.9 dB at 1.5 gig, and about 9 dB or so at 2 gigahertz. And if we look at the specifications for directivity in the low frequency range, again, typically about 30 dB. Um, we we're actually starting in our mid range, about 27 dB, and then you get to the upper range, uh, typically about 22, but the worst case it could be, you know, typical minimum would be about 10 dB. I'm re measuring about nine, probably not, uh, you know, too too unexpected considering I'm using a bunch of adapters here, but we're reasonably close to the measurements that we have. And then using you know the, the reference uh, waveform and a live waveform, we can make those measurements almost directly. You know, if we had a, a cursor delta function or a trace difference function, uh, that would be handy, but we don't have that. Well, so there you have it. How to set up and use this SV4401A to do some validation or quick characterization of something like a directional coupler, uh, like this mini circuits device here. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. And thanks again as always for watching. We'll see you again next time.